What's going on guys? Ryan with Jetta Patrol back with another video. Today the hype is real. You guys are ready for this. Hot Toys Mandalorian with Child Deluxe. Let's open it up. That's right guys, Ryan back with another video. Hope you guys are excited about this. You know I am. This is my... Ah, uh, one of the most anticipated figures of 2020 right here. This is, I mean, we got the original Mando, which we're going to break out and do a little comparison, but this right here is the upgraded Beskar Armor Mando with the Child Deluxe. So we're actually going to have two different child figures with this. And I'm not going to spoil it, but if you've seen it by now, the child has a freaking name. And, um... There you go. That's all I'm going to say about that because you might be watching this later. This thing is freaking amazing. Can't wait. Uh, it actually got shipped on Tuesday. Today, I'm recording this on Friday, which is Black Friday. It was shipped out on Tuesday when it was released from Hong Kong. Arrived here on Friday. Probably would have been here yesterday, but we had Thanksgiving, and there's that. So I want to say thank you to Pop Collectibles on Instagram for hooking me up with this. I will put a link to their Instagram down below if you want to check out any day one pre-orders uh, figures releases from them. Definitely check them out. Uh, again, Shipped it Tuesday, arrived Friday. Pretty stoked about that. So we are definitely going to be having more day one orders coming in very soon. So stay tuned for that to the channel. If you like that kind of stuff, subscribe. Let's take a look at this box real quick, guys. Here we go. The Mando Deluxe with Child. Look at this thing. We got the Mando up here with his Beskar armor, with his Mudhorn signet there. We got the Child and the Pram. Again, this is the Deluxe. TMS 015 right here on the box, the deluxe version. So the deluxe does come with some extra pieces, which I think it would be kind of silly to get the non-deluxe based on what you're getting, unless you're buying multiple. If you're buying multiple of them, you might want the deluxe and you might want the non-deluxe. I don't know. Uh, but right off the bat, everybody's going to ask, should I get the deluxe? Yes. Absolutely good deluxe. But anyways, that we'll, we'll, get, we'll get there in a second. Uh, we got this nice little wrap, which we've been seeing with most Star Wars figures, which is kind of nice. Uh, we got a little Mando on the side. We got all the whodunits on the back for those who are interested in that. Again, TMS 015 right there. The Mandalorian and Child Deluxe. And then we've got uh, the same thing right here. But let's take a look what is in the actual box. So this thing literally just got dropped off. And uh, we're going to go ahead and see what the heck's in here. Check this out. This is nice. Got a little Mando action with the child. Obviously, this is going to be from the scene from version, uh, the, the season uh, one, episode one. So that's kind of interesting that they got this with the Beskar, because he wasn't wearing the Beskar armor in this scene. So there's that. I don't know. Uh, but it's interesting they put that in this one. So that's that's kind of cool. Uh, but obviously, they just did it because they have the figure. And there you go. So that's pretty nice. A uh, little, little insert arc there. Let's take a look at this. Look at all these accessories, guys. Holy cow. This might take a minute. Let's go ahead and get these accessories out. We're going to put these to the side. We've got... Oh, man. Look at this tray. Let's see here. Is we're going to just take the whole thing off? Oh, oh. There's an under tray. There's an under tray. What? So many accessories. Holy crap. All right. So let's just get this guy out of here. Don't need the box any longer. So it looks like we've got three different trays. We've got uh, accessories and hands. We'll look at this stuff in a second. We've got a base. A diorama base, some uh, jetpacks, whatnot, and we have the Mando, Child, Pram, all this different stuff. Let's go ahead and take some of the stuff out of the box and uh, see what we got. All right, guys, so we've got all the accessories out of the box, and you can tell right now the posing options on this thing are going to be pretty much unlimited, and it's going to be super fun to play around with, you know, uh, Mando with its previous version, with the Child, with uh, Stormtroopers and different things like that. So let's go ahead and start off at, let's talk about the Rising Phoenix. Let's talk about this first. All right, so right off the bat, one of the best features of this, other than the awesome paint, is magnetic. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's awesome. Now, if you have the previous versions of like Boba Fett figures or even the Sideshow Django Fett, you know it's got those little hooks and they're an absolute nightmare to deal with. This is a nice like felt material or uh, padding they've got on the back so it doesn't scratch the armor on the Mando. But magnets, so happy about that. The paint apps on this, you can see the Beskar type paint finish going on here. There's some nice pitting. It's definitely not pristine. You can definitely tell there's some pitting going on here. There's some speckling and, and the paints and whatnot. And uh, it, is, it is just beautiful. There we go. The bottom side of it. This is where we're going to get our blast effects, which are very similar to Iron Man effects. If uh, you have Iron Man figures, so they're going to peg right in there. And just overall, absolute cool piece. I will definitely be displaying mine at some point using the Rising Phoenix because 
you know, it's just awesome. So super excited about that, but that's a cool piece. Uh, just like I was saying, these blast effects we got here, pretty much the exact same things we're used to with Iron Man figures. Uh, so really nothing new there. They are kind of sharp and pointy, so you don't want to be dropping them on the ends. Uh, but they do plug right into the bottom of this Rising Phoenix, just like this. And uh, then you got your little blast effect, so not bad. And of course, if you plug them straight in, they look a little better. Oh, sound. Everybody loves that plastic sound, right? But there you go. Looking pretty sick. So, big fan of that. That's pretty cool. We do have another blast effect. This is a flamethrower effect that goes into his uh, gauntlet. This is exactly, and I, I had it right next to me. In fact, let me show you this. Check this out right here. This is the Mando uh, flamethrower. This is the incinerator trooper flamethrower. Exactly the same piece. The only difference is the bottom part where it actually connects. So here you got your flamethrower from the incinerator trooper. It's got uh, uh, three points. And then down here, they've just changed out this place. And it's got a little blue in it versus the, the clear. A little more blue on this one. And this actually just kind of slides over uh, his gauntlet. So there you go. So if you've seen this before, you've seen this, you know exactly what you're getting. Next up, we've got some whistling birds. This is a pretty cool effect. I, I remember this actually reminded me of the Django Fett if you had that figure from Sideshow, it reminded me of that little blast of smoke effect going on here. But the whistling birds, these things look freaking awesome. So it's got this nice little wind smoke effect. And then on the top, it's got the metallic finish going on here with the actual darts, spikes, whatever the heck you want to call them. And these are uh, somewhat, I don't think you're supposed to pose these, but they are somewhat movable. Uh, but that looks pretty nice there. Pretty stoked to have that as part of this. I, we should have got this with the first version. Just throwing that out there. That would have been kind of fun. Um, let's see what else we got. This. The Mudhorn Signet armor or pauldron here. Look at this thing. The paint apps are unbelievable. And look at the shine. Really, really dig this one very much. And it's going to attach via Velcro, so that's pretty simple. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing difficult there. But I really i am glad to finally have this. I don't know if I'm going to display mine. Well, my, well, who am I kidding? Of course, I'm going to display it with this. This is uh, obviously later on uh, in Season 1. But this right here is just absolutely beautiful. So big fan of that. Next up, we got this piece, which we really should have got with the first figure as well. The Vibro Blade. This was super cool. If you remember that scene from the uh, first season uh, where Mando is in the covert and they, uh, they kind of just kind of get into a fight with uh, John Favreau and, and Mando here. Uh, he's got his Vibro Blade in here, which he uses to kill the Mudhorn as well. Uh, but this one's super cool. You can, this one's definitely got some dirt and grime and stuff going on here. It is plastic. There's nothing metal about this thing. Uh, but I think they did a really good job with it, and I'm uh, pretty excited to have that because that's a, a fun accessory, which every Mando typically has one of these. Uh, we do have his blaster, which we saw in the previous version as well. So there we go there. I don't think there's anything super different about this one, but uh, I guess I can grab that one and just double check. Just for fun, uh, new one on the right, old one on the left, and it appears to be uh, pretty much the same thing, which is not really much of a shocker. I don't really see much difference. If you guys see a difference, let me know. Um, but it appears to be the exact same piece to me. So, don't you make sense? It really shouldn't have changed, right? Moving up to this piece, this is actually the Whistling Bird attachment pre-firing, if you will, uh, that pops up. You can actually change up on his gauntlet. So that's a pretty nice little piece. It actually just kind of snaps right in there. Uh, super simple and nothing crazy, but that's kind of nice. If you want to have him like getting ready to fire these instead of actually firing them, because this ends up turning into this. And you might want to use this for space purposes, or you might want to use this because it's just flipping awesome. I don't know. Uh, but that's pretty cool, too. Uh, we do have this piece as well. It's got a rangefinder that you can change out on the helmet. So there we go. It actually just pops up on his right, your left. Uh, actually just pegs, uh, slide it down, and then it slides back into the helmet. Uh, but there's this rangefinder right there. No LED effects or anything going on with that. I think that would have been kind of cool, but not necessary at all. So there's that. Look at all these things. Man, there's so many accessories. Grappling hook grappling dart if you will uh super detailed piece right here you can see what going on this is actually metal i don't think you want to be bending this i'm glad it's metal because otherwise it would just droop down and look kind of silly uh, so they actually made this out of metal so it can actually have some direction a vector if you will and uh i think that's pretty cool it is very 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 thin so uh pretty lightweight so dig that as well so many accessories holy cow We've got a remote detonator. If you guys saw this from the previous version, nothing new. It's just got the same piece. Nicely painted as you'd expect. We've got our uh, tracker fob. Again, same from the previous version. So there we go. That's cool. 
Uh, the child, which we'll get to here in just a little minute, has this nice little Nithosaur uh, necklace. That's pretty cool. Kind of dig that one. It's super, super small, though. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's quite small. But I think it's nicely done. It's plastic. Nothing crazy to go on there. It'd be nice if it was made out of Beskar. That'd be kind of cool. And then we got a pile of hands, which are going to be pretty much the exact same hands we got with the previous version. So you're going to get two fisted hands, uh, which are definitely Shore Trooper uh, inspired uh, with his uh, orange fingertips here. We've got a blaster holding hand right here. And then we've got another blaster holding hand, and that's pretty much it. This is going to be for his regular pistol blaster. So, yep, that's a bunch of hands. You guys have seen hands before. That's what they look like. And we've got two rifle, if you will, grasping hands uh, on the figure still. So we got those. So dynamic stand, which we did not get with the previous version because it didn't come with the Rising Phoenix. So this version actually comes with the dynamic flight stand. So that's kind of cool. Uh, be careful. Mine, when I got mine, uh, the screw that's in here it was not attached to the hex nut that's on there. So it literally came flying out. And I had to go searching for that little hex nut. Uh, on the carpet and that was not fun so i don't know why it just wasn't attached properly but you know be careful i guess that's i haven't really had that happen before the stand we're going to get this ridiculous stand i flip and hate this thing i hate it i hate it i, hate it. I said it in the last version i hate the stand and i don't hate it because of the base i hate it because these freaking footprints can't stand these things i wish they would stop using them uh, but you know they're not going to listen to me on that one it's a stand and then you've got this piece right here which attaches for the child so there you go this has a little rock that you actually pop this rock piece out of kind of pegs out here and then you've got this guy that pegs right in there and you want to connect it you can put your child pram floating on there if you wish if not you can put the rock right there and just kind of like it's like a hideaway key you keep a house key under a rock that's where you keep uh, that's where you keep that so that's so many accessories on that side of the table we've got so many more to go it is unbelievable so where should we go let's talk about the blaster rifle sorry egg uh the blaster rifle here is exactly the same as the previous version again they went with this uh and i was hoping they would do something different but they got this little peg that pegs onto his uh bandolier there but it's um you know just be careful with that it's pretty much the same uh if you got the previous version maybe you didn't get the previous version maybe you, this is your first one i don't know uh, but this is a super cool piece uh, all around. Nice little wood grain effect going on the on the stock there. And you've got that. Now, we don't get, if you remember the previous version had those like uh, pulse effects going on, the plastic vinyl pieces that come off the side. This one doesn't come with that. Uh, so there is a change on that go, uh, side of this. This uh, scope does come off if you want to take that off. Um, but overall, just a nicely painted piece. I really, I really quite like this thing very much. So big fan of that. It's like there's the we're not even we're never going to make it to the figure there are so many accessories this is insane this this was pretty cool if you remember in the armory we got the little uh, hologram of what his armor was going to look like i thought this was a pretty cool piece i, I wasn't expecting this i uh, probably should have been but i wasn't i'm not sure how you would display this maybe you display this with your previous mando uh i, I don't know it's a cool piece uh, but I don't know that it was really necessary, so I'm not sure how you would display it, but there's that. We do have some Beskar steel chunks, slabs, right here, and this is pretty cool. So I knew this was coming like this, but I did not know it was magnetic. You can actually take a, a chunk of it off, so that's kind of nice. Interesting to note, though, uh, we're going to get, uh, I guess I missed it on this side, too. you got a single piece, sorry. you got a single piece, and then you got a slab, and you can actually separate what looks like uh, five pieces, and then another dozen or so pieces here. That's magnetic. This is not magnetic to this, the single one. But the uh, the logo doesn't look quite right. I don't know if they missed it because of the scale of it. It was just too small to get the actual Imperial logo right. But uh, that's definitely not right. And uh, But the design is cool. I can forgive that. Not that big a deal. And uh, when, when you see where this goes, uh, you'll be even uh, more pleased. So let's put that to the side. Put that to the side. Let's talk about this Cam Tono this part of the deluxe package if you don't get the deluxe you don't get this and you don't get this uh and you don't get the whistling birds effects there's some other things you should get the deluxe let me just go throw that out there you already see it we haven't even made it to the figure yet and we're spending all this time on the accessories because all these accessories impact how you're going to display your figure and pose your figure so here's the cam tono on the top you've got this uh, nice little handle right here which you can grab onto 
And then if you want, it just took me a, a second to figure out how to open this thing. You actually push up from the bottom. It actually opens out like that and then you and then it folds down. There is a little tab, if I can. There's a little tab right there that tabs into the top of this thing. So you can actually open all, pull these open just like that and then pull down. And there's the third one that comes around. The paint application on this is freaking awesome. Look at this. Absolutely cool. You can see all the little copper colors we got going on here, which is very nicely done. And then on the inside, I mean, just the weathering on it, everything looks beautiful. On the bottom is pretty much what you expect. Nothing growing on there. But it does have this cool feature, which is pretty nice. So this part right here where the controls are, you actually lift this up just like this. It kind of pops right up. There's some pegs there. And then there's three batteries that get placed in there, which you do, it does come with the batteries. You flip the switch. So here, if I can do this the other way. And then, boom, look at this. Nice little ar amber glow going on right in there, and it looks freaking fantastic. So there's on, off, right? On, off. Absolutely looks fantastic. Oops, sorry. Here's your, uh, there's your light going on over there. This thing is flipping beautiful. So obviously that battery's gonna die if I leave it on too long, so I'm not gonna do that. And then we're gonna put our, uh, put our controller back there. But that looks super sick. We're gonna get our Beskar sticker. Now Beskar has a round hole in there so it can actually sit in this little plate. This thing is a little fiddly, so bear with me as I get that going on there. But uh, once you get it in there, it pretty much sticks. So that's pretty sick. So if I was to take that, turn the light back on, you can see, look at that. How gorgeous is that? They didn't have to add a light up function in there, but the fact that they did is why I love hot toys. I flick, I need these, oh, I freaking love these things. All right, we got a long way to go, gentlemen. Ladies, all right, so there's that. Camtono's there. Let's get into the child. So if you're gonna get the regular, pretty much comes with this child. This is the one you're gonna get. I really like this for the simple fact that it is sculpted, all of it. They sculpted in these nice little creases and bunches and bundles and everything. And they didn't have to do that. It could have made it super flat, but they didn't. Uh, and I like the fact that his cheeks are not super pink and rosy. They're like, they're just green. And there's a little bit going on there, but it is nowhere near the Satchel Life Size Child uh, Pink, if you know what I'm talking about. You've probably seen that video and seen a bunch of people talking about it. No articulated parts going on here. Um, you know, that's fine. I don't see anything crazy. There are no ear seams, so that's cool. And there's no hair, which, I mean, it's fine. I don't, I don't care about that. Here's his feet, by the way. I know everybody wants to see his feet. There we go. He comes with built-in treads. So, yeah, I think it's pretty nice. I like I like the pose. I like the little force pose thing. Wait a minute. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, oh. I was wrong. Look at that. His head turns. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. Told you wrong. There you go. Ball joint. I believe you do actually have to remove the head. Let's see if I can just do that on camera now. Yep, you do have to remove the head to put on the Mythosaur necklace. So let's just go ahead and make that happen because I'm definitely going to do that anyways. Except for this tiny little string. And you're going to go here. There we go. Oh, come on, Mythosaur necklace. Work with me. This string. Oh! Fell. This is the reality of uh, putting tiny things on figures. Let's see, we got to get it facing the right way there. There we go. It's just a ball joint. All right, there we go. That's okay. That's way better. That's way better. Dude, come on. Ooh, got a little ball joint action going on there. Unlike the uh, Sideshow Life Size Child, he can actually somewhat look down instead of always looking up. So that's pretty cool. like that one. So there's one child. Now, if you get the Deluxe, you're also going to get the Pram, which is beautifully painted, i got to say. Beautifully painted. Check out this orange color, this copper, uh, this gray wash we got going on here. It is definitely not a flat paint. Uh, there's definitely texture going on all over the place with this thing. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, this piece right here is where the... Uh, connector goes in if you feel like using that but check out the detail on the underneath so cool part about this this actually just this doesn't actually connect all that well it just kind of sits there that's pretty much it it will fall off so be careful with that the child 
comes <laughs> this is cool comes with this little blanket that's kind of nice kind of goes back there um but the child is actually in here and is connected oh look at that how cute is that uh, it's connected via magnets so look at that so the child has no feet um goes right in there magnets that is awesome love that they included a little blanket that's a super nice touch but there you go so this comes with the deluxe again no reason not to get the deluxe you can get the deluxe to get this to display with your original armor mando and then you can have this guy uh going with the new mando so you've got two child figures to display with one you know anyways you know what i'm talking about so there we go look at that thing super fantastic so there we go guys i know this is a long video but it's worth it this thing is freaking amazing and there's just so much stuff going on that we got to talk about it and i don't want to shortchange it so just look at this thing what a cool piece what a cool piece this is like a little uh microfiber if you will a little blanket it's super lightweight super lightweight look at all the detail they put on the inside of this pram dude super cool super cool all right guys so it's the time you've all been waiting for the deluxe mando beskar armor look at this thing absolutely beautiful check it out in the light that beskar armor doing what it does looking flipping awesome i mean look at this helmet we'll definitely compare this one to the previous version as well so just bear with me let's take a look at this one first and we'll kind of take a look at the differences uh right off the bat i can tell you the difference is the helmet is way cleaner uh on this versus the previous version we had and you can see just how pristine and paint this thing is. There's definitely pitting going on to give it that realism uh, look to it. But when we uh, break out the other helmet, you'll be able to tell it is very, very much different. And you can see how this is just shining through this light going on here. And the pitting going on around the armor, again, just giving that realistic look. We've got a nice uh, strap going over here, which that's... Mm, I wish they didn't use that little peg, but they did it again, so that's, that's fine. We've got the different uh, colored under armor if you will this is definitely great the previous version was a light tan if i remember correctly uh, we will look at that soon but uh, going across just you know pretty much the exact same setup as the previous mando as it's supposed to be just upgraded right uh you can see all along here just this this is pristine the pants uh are definitely a gray which is uh i'm not sure if that's super accurate uh, how gray they are uh, I want to say that maybe being a little bit more brown in the show, uh, but they're going to get color grading to go on. And so maybe they were this color and the color grading turned it brown, or maybe they just like it. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but regardless of that, here's our new uh, armor plate we've got going on here. Look at the battle damage going on this thing. This looks flipping unbelievable. Look at that. It looks like it got hit with like a heat blast or something like, you know, blaster rifle, and it just kind of melted and kind of got damaged. That's pretty cool. Uh, and it kind of goes on down. I mean, look, this is just unbelievable. Hot Toys absolutely nailed this thing. The shine from this uh, thigh armor going on here. We've got our upgraded gauntlets with our uh, whistling bird action going on. Uh, super cool going on here. And then we got some nice paint apps going on uh, on the on the right arm as well. This is awesome. This is our Velcro piece. We should be able to change this right on out for our Mudhorn Signet. Let's go ahead and do that just because it's... Fun. but boom there we go just like that looking awesome really quite like this I, I understand this has definitely got that fat suit on underneath so I uh, you know I was considering changing removing the fat suit on my previous uh, Mando and I still may do that and I may remove it from this one uh, I just I, I understand why it's there to make it look you know the way it looks but I like to pose my figures and I like to have fun with them so we're probably going to end up removing that fat suit. We've got this guy right here with these magnets going on here. These are not super strong magnets, and I can imagine at some point, be careful with these, because as small as those little magnets are, in fact, you can already see it. You can already see it. These are going to come unglued. Let's see if I can get focus as tiny as this is. That is already going to come unglued. I know that's really hard to focus. Uh, but the magnet to the actual pleather uh, just... It's just a thing. It goes with pretty much every Star Wars holster has had that problem. Uh, so a little Gorilla Glue uh, will fix that right on up. But don't be surprised if that comes off, off your figure as well. Because this is literally, I just opened this thing and there it is right there. So here we go. we got some battle damage going on in the back plate uh, right here. Just the attention to details. Freaking amazing. Uh, cartridges going on. We've got our 
Uh, let's see if I can get this arm out of it. We've got our detonators going on here, which is where our other detonator goes. And if it's like the previous figure, it doesn't really want to sit in all that well. And yeah, let's see here. Yeah, it really doesn't want to sit in all that great. So you can fiddle with it and try to get it in there. It would have been nice. The, the right way to do this would have been a magnet. They should have just said, boom, magnet. And then that would have been sick. Uh, but it, even then, it just doesn't sit in. See how it just sits up a little high? That's a little, for the OCD people, that would drive you crazy. Uh, that's not me. I don't really have that big a deal with it. Um, but yeah, just overall with this thing, it looks flipping beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Love this uh, thigh or a shin armor we've got going on here with the cartridges. I think that's pretty nice. And then the browns and the blacks and grays we've got going on through this boot. A split cut boot, which is very nice. Thank you. I uh, wish some of those Jedi had some split cut boot, but no, they won't do that. But just look at this all around. So articulation wise, we can have some fun with this while we've uh, got it here before we get into like the comparison. Uh, but we do have double jointed knee, so no issues there whatsoever as far as articulation. You got a ball joint here, so you can pretty much get this wherever you want. So that's kind of nice. Shoulders, this has been a problem with the other uh, version is you can't really get the shoulders up. Uh, so shoulders are gonna go up about that high. I don't mind pressing a little for, uh, further. So you can go up about that high. Double jointed elbows, no issues with the elbows at all. Uh, so no issues with that. The main problem with the fat suit I've got is really gonna be in the twist, which is partially due to the fat suit, partially due to the actual armor. And you wanna be careful with this piece as you're twisting and turning and bending. Um, but the arms, um, to be able to get that blaster rifle up, like if you wanna get that blaster rifle up where you would normally get it, this elbow's gotta come it's got to come up here and you can't really do that and i don't know if it's a fault of the body or the fat suit but you can you don't want to be let's see if i can do this you don't want to rip any of this but you can definitely feel the tension going on if you start pulling this thing up you can definitely feel it and you want to be able to get that up so if you're looking down a blaster like this you want to be able to get that hand up right or the elbow up and you can't really do that here so that's a problem uh, as far as how far it goes forward again let's see if i can do this in a way that's helpful for you guys. Um, forward is also a problem. Forward is also a problem. Sorry, helmet. Um, you really can't. You really can't get it to go much for uh, for more further than that. That's bad English. Uh, and then going backwards. So the the fat suit's got a huge uh, in um, inhibitor going on with the articulation of the arms on this figure. So that's one of the reasons why I, I really wish they wouldn't have done that. They could have just used maybe a different body underneath maybe i don't know i do like that we're going to get double jointed uh elbows and um i like the ball joint on the head and all that's fine but um yeah there we go the cloak on the back's got that same hole where the blaster rifle um that little magnet piece right here kind of comes through as you can tell as soon as i decide to do that those magnets are going to come off so before i even mess with that i'm going to have to glue that because i can tell you right now that that magnet it's trying to hold on it's trying but it's like with a, it's a, it's very, it's trying, man. But it ain't gonna stay. There's no way. Um, yeah, I really quite like this. This should go underneath the pauldron there, dude. The 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 posing on this figure is all about little micro expressions with how the helmet turns. That's really what he's about. And you guys can see right here. I mean, it's just beautiful. Your holster here. I am a big fan of this. They, instead of using the magnets on this holster, it's got this little slit where the uh, little pleather piece goes in and out. So that's perfectly fine with me. Big fan of that. I think maybe my favorite piece on all of this is probably this thigh armor. I just like the detail they put on it. Big fan of that. Let's go ahead and break out the other figure, uh, the previous version, compare these guys, and then uh, see how they're different. Right off the bat, guys, we've got some poses here for you. Just gonna keep it super simple. And there are actually some interesting stuff about the pram that I wanna show you in a little bit. But let's look at these two guys side by side. We can see the original armor uh, Mando here next to the Beskar armor Mando. Again, with the Camtono looking pretty sick. He doesn't really have the best hand for holding the Camtono, but uh, you can see right there, it's, uh, it actually will hold it. It's just a little awkward. But there we go, getting a close look on these guys. The child, I think, looks fantastic. So I'm really a big fan of that piece. And the fact that they give us an acrylic stand for it, I think is uh, pretty nice as well. So we got our whistling birds going on here with our Beskar Mando. And then over on the regular Mando, I went ahead and put on the flamethrower effect. Guys, just right off the bat, how awesome do these two look together? 
absolutely beautiful figures. And this is what I'm talking about with the regular Armor Mando. Um, he actually looks just on the on the shelf, on on the display shelf. He's gonna stand out more than the Beskar Armor Mando. That's just me being me. You guys can display it however you want. Pick whichever one up when you uh, one you want. But this right here, side by, I think I think there's a valid reason just right here in these uh, few shots to reason to get both uh versions and, and no in doubt i mean no doubt we're going to get a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth version of this guy if anybody out there is thinking that they uh, won't uh you're crazy they're going to milk this for all it's worth but let's go ahead and zoom in i want to take a look at a couple of things uh the original armor uh mando here and then down here with the child figurine which i think again i think looks pretty freaking good if i say so myself look at that I'm just telling you, these things look so awesome when you get them in some proper lighting. It just makes them pop off of the uh, off the video, off the screen, uh, versus just some simple uh, flat lighting. These guys, there's your Camtona. Look at the detail going on right there. Moving on up, look at the, how the armor is bouncing off the light, and it just looks absolutely fantastic. So I was able to get the uh, rifle to stick on the Beskar Mando, as you can see, because the magnet is just barely holding on to the glue, just barely. Um, but there he is. There's our child, the pram. And I'm just telling you, everything about these sets are just absolutely fantastic. I want to give you guys just some close-ups on this guy. But zooming back out, again, these are just some display options for you. You can display them however you want. You can interchange them. You can have some fun with it. I don't see there's any reason why you can't just move parts around. Uh, the whistling birds are definitely not going to fit on the original Mando because it doesn't have that pop-out joint uh, or peg for the gauntlet for it actually to go anywhere, but just, I mean, just everything is about this is fantastic. Super happy with this. Hope you guys are able to get yours as well, but let's go ahead and get these guys in some other poses, and I want to show you something cool about the uh, pram that comes with it, the Hot Toys Deluxe version. All right, guys, we've got a Mando versus some Remnant Troopers. I thought this would be super fun. I've got piles of Stormtroopers, so why not use them in a cool display option, and if you know me, I love posing my figures, and I wanted to get Mando on the flight stand with his uh, rising fingers. Let's take a closer look at this thing. Obviously, this guy is looking pretty, pretty awesome. Rising fingers up there with the magnetic connection, with the flame effects, uh, facing down against these remnant troopers. And these guys right here do not know what the heck's going on with them. He likes those odds, and uh, this guy's just looking super cool. So one of the tips I have for you guys, the flight stand. See if I can zoom. In. If you guys can see, I actually have the. Uh, claw going backwards and he's literally sitting on it and I found that to be a way to get the figure elevated a little higher and look right here look at this boom how epic is that we've got a flamethrower and we've got his uh his blaster pistol going on there but what I was saying is I actually had him sitting on the uh post here so I can zoom in here uh, and I actually have the the clip or the uh, grabber backwards and I found that, like I said, as a way to get the figure a little higher. Sometimes these dynamic stands are just not high enough uh, for my liking. And, uh, you know, anyways. Remnant Troopers, guys, if you didn't get one of these, uh, I'm sorry, because they're freaking awesome. But you might want to have your uh, your Mando displayed like this. You might not. I don't know. Uh, but if you want to have him battling a bunch of figures, a bunch of Stormtroopers, you'd certainly do that. We can bring in the Incinerator Trooper. We can bring in a Death Trooper. We can bring in all kinds of guys but i wanted to have some fun with this thing posing him this is a very simple pose nothing crazy going on here we got a flamethrower we got a pistol uh, and i did take off the uh, rifle off the back obviously to put on the magnetic uh, uh, rising phoenixes this thing is just freaking cool man i'm excited about this i really am what do you guys think let me know down below we're going to do this uh one more time let's find another pose to put the mando in all right so while that is still spinning in the background i wanted to take a second to show you this this is the child with the pram hot toys version and it's, like i said earlier about a month or so ago i did a video on how to display your hallmark version of this guy and so i figured it'd be fun to show the differences and similarities between these two so here we go guys scale wise as you can see it's pretty freaking close this is the hallmark 20 dollars version and then there's the hot toys version obviously paint apps are different you've got plastic going on here whereas here you've got some fabric but i mean for 20 dollars, i think hallmark did a damn good job I mean, the difference in textures is something you would expect from a $20 ornament uh, versus a, you know, a $300 accessory. Uh, but I really think they did a good job. I mean, as far as the pram painting, you can see there's that. I mean, colors are not 
terribly off. They, I mean, they're obviously different. But if you don't want to spend the money and get the Deluxe Child Pram deal here, then $20 Hallmark version is not really out of the question. It really just depends on if you want to spend the money. So one of the fun things about six scale collecting, actually collecting in general at Marvel Legends boxes, whatever, is you can tell your own story. And right here, I wanted to tell a different story. Maybe one that should be told. I don't know. But, you know, why not mix it up? We've got Attack of the Clones Yoda with our six scale child. And how awesome would this little display be? He's got Yoda there kind of teaching him stuff or just having an interaction. Uh, there's our child right there. And one of the things I do not like about Attack of Clans Yoda is the hair. Can't stand that stuff, but it is what it is. Uh, but look at this right there. That's not, that's not a terrible display right there. I mean, that could totally happen until we get our, well, man, I, I hate to spoil stuff. Anyways, this right here is going to be super cool uh, to display. Now, I don't know if I'm going to leave it this way, but, you know, this is just having your imagination run wild. That would be kind of fun to do that. But uh, overall, I think it's a pretty fantastic figure and uh, pretty excited that I got this one. All right, guys, so I wanted to break out a couple more figures to have some fun, kind of wrap up this thing. Give me my final thoughts on this uh, Beskar Mando. So we got some Remnant Troopers to the left. We've got the child in the pram. We've got the little little child on the feet, which I really kind of like that one. Uh, Beskar Mando, regular Mando, the original Mando, and then we've got the Incinerator Trooper. My Death Trooper should be coming any, any day. I do have the Death Trooper Specialist, which I did a video on not too long ago. Uh, but this line might be shaping up to be the best line yet. So let's, let's kind of just walk you through a couple things. One, I want to talk about the remnant troopers. I, I said many, many times that these particular troopers were going to sell out. They're going to get hot and it absolutely was the case. So there's that. These they definitely sold out and are going for uh, over retail already, which is, uh, it's kind of cool if you got a couple of them and we had a little insight as to what's going to go on. Um, those are cool troopers and I really like those guys. Uh, then we've got our child, which, you know, right off the bat, it's, uh, the pram is beautifully done. I don't think there's any issues with it whatsoever. The magnetic child, the way it sits in there, I think that's great. Um, I wish it would have came with a base that wasn't like, if you wanted to display it by itself without the other base, then you got this. That's a little disappointing, but I guess I can forgive that. Uh, it does look a little weird. Uh, just, you know, just sitting there like that, as you guys can see, that's just, that's just strange. Um, going over here, we've got the two Mandos side by side, and I, I'm going to stick with my original opinion, guys. I really like the OG Mando. Uh, I, I like the Beskar Mando, don't be wrong, but I, there's, I don't know. You guys let me know in the comment section down below. Let me zoom in here. Uh, look at the difference. Look at the difference here. This is just this is what I'm talking about. Uh, I'll brighten it up a little bit. But this, uh, the difference in contrast and the stitch and the colors and everything, just the original armor Mandos, for me, it, it takes the cake. I just I really like that one way more. It has more of a Western vibe. I think that might be what I like about it. It might be the colors. I don't know. Regardless of whichever one you're going to get, I mean, they're both great figures. Uh, I just prefer the original Mando one over the Beskar Mando one. It just has more, it has more shelf presence, right? It has more shelf presence. And we scroll down here, we get the uh, the other child that comes uh, with the uh, with the Beskar Mando. It's a pretty cool piece. I like it just fine. I'm really glad they added the Mythosaur necklace. Uh, big fan of that as well. And um, I like it. But overall, I mean, I guess we can point over here to the Incinerator Trooper. If you missed out on Incinerator Trooper, I don't know what you're waiting on. That thing is freaking cool. Uh, I'll put links for these guys down below if you want. Uh, most of them are up for uh, order still. You can still pick up a couple of these guys. But this might be shaping up to be the best line we, we have so far in Star Wars. And, and this is coming from somebody who freaking loves the Rogue One lineup, K2, Generoso Disguise, uh, all the troopers, the short troopers, all, all those guys. These guys right here, as you can see, as we did some uh, earlier uh, posing options, they got so many options. That's crazy. Uh, but I'd love to hear from you guys. If you uh, like the original one, if you like the, the upgraded one, let me know about that. Um, and how would you display it if you got it? I'd love to hear from you guys on which one you prefer. If you like the original Mando, you like the Beskar Mando. If you want to get day one pre-orders, day one orders like this, just like this, because otherwise you can be waiting three or four months if you're in the States, uh, check out Pop Collectibles. I'll put their Instagram uh, in the description below. You can check those guys out. That's where I got this one uh, from uh, this particular figure. So there we go, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, what the heck are you waiting on? Subscribe. we got more figures coming in. Bound, Six Scale News episode coming very soon. And next up is going to be the Darth Maul uh, DX-18 
figure from Solo, and I can't wait to do that figure. So let's get on to it. Guys, hope you have a great day. As always, click what you like. See you next time.